Times are warning of a dire election season for Democrats, saying the left is struggling to appeal to Americans. So are the Democrats doomed? Joe Concha joins us now. Joe, I think we know the answer to that. We've been reporting on this issue for months. What finally brought the Post and the Times to the party? probably looking at their own polls, even though those polls have shown what we've been talking about for months, Todd and Carly, right? And it's also pretty simple when you actually get out of the newsroom and speak to Americans, regardless of their ideology or party, right? I mean, Americans believe the economy is going in the wrong direction, that's only getting worse. Inflation and gas prices are eating into their wages like most have never ever seen in their lifetimes. Um, people generally feel less safe in their communities, particularly urban areas. Police are being targeted like never before. The border is anything but a true border. It's being overrun. Deadly drugs like fentanyl are coming in and killing record numbers of Americans, uh, particularly in the younger generation, right? So the messaging around COVID and mass mandates is contradictory. It's inconsistent. Our enemies are emboldened overseas. And when you when they're asked, whether we're talking about the administration or Democrats in general, what solutions do you have? Uh, they like to play the victim. You know, inflation is Putin's fault, and the open border is Trump's fault, and COVID is the unvaccinated's fault. And Afghanistan, Ukraine, those situations, no one can see coming, they say. And, and this is why the polling is so horrific. They see a president and a party that is accomplished, very accomplished at complaining, but not at problem solving. Hence the blowout that we're going to see in November, Todd and Carly. One of the big stories of the day, Elon Musk bought Twitter and boy oh boy people in the media are responding some of the responses from reporters um, NPR's Eric Deegans he says expect the amount of misinformation and disinformation in our media ecosystem to explode sigh NBC News yeah. reporter Ben Collins also says uh, there are plenty of models for where this site is likely headed I'm on the site you're not going to like it and you know the interesting thing is you know, you're in the media you should be a champion of free speech, freedom of press. What's going on here? Well, free speech means bringing in all kinds of speech, right, from the right, the left, the center, and everywhere in between. And I love this narrative, Carly, that Twitter was somehow a utopia of truth, uh, that, you know, the company didn't take a side against one party or a certain ideology, that the company didn't actively censor and suppress information it deemed misinformation. You know, like COVID could have possibly come from a lab in Wuhan, and, you know, that, that would get you censored. Or Hunter Biden's laptop was simply a product of Russian disinformation, they said. And if you said otherwise, and your account was going to get locked. So this argument that, but if we could just keep Twitter the way it was, given like it, it acted like a partisan political organization, is a losing one. And by the way, always follow the money. Twitter's earnings come out on Thursday, and they're expected to be horrible. The board here had no choice but to take this offer from Elon Musk, because one was never coming like it again. And if they didn't, the lawsuits were going to start flying, because obviously then the board wasn't living up to its fiduciary responsibility. 100% accurate there, Joe Concha. Thank you, sir. We appreciate it. Thank you.